So I'd like to move more firmly to discussion about diversity. Um, and you also talk about proof of concept, so I'll kind of toggle back and forth. Um, so in 2018, I did some writing for your 3% curriculum, and that experience kind of made me, I would say, pull back the curtain a little more and kind of dive deeply. And that's when I really could more concretely see the idea of diversity equals creativity equals profitability. It really sort of mapped itself out as I was looking at that. Um, and I use a lot of the things that uh, were developed there in my classroom today. And then I ended up um, starting to use the diversity brief that you worked with Gray to develop, which I just love. So really, I think diversity is at the apex of 3% now. Is that a fair statement? I think diversity is, has always been that. Yeah. I mean, everything from day one was about wanting more uh, unique perspectives bumping up against each other to create better innovation. And that is still true. I mean, that, is, that will always be true. That is the heartbeat. That is the thing that gets me excited. Um, so yeah, that's diversity equals creativity equals profitability. That was the most concise I could write it. And I still believe that to be true. So do you see that shift as just sort of a natural progression? Or was there something that really made you say I need to embrace diversity a little more fully than maybe in that first year when you were, I think, more primarily focused on women? Well, I think my understanding about intersectionality really exploded in the course of this work. And um, you know, if you talk about gender advancement and you don't make it intersectional, white women will prosper. It just seems that that's what happens. And so I realized, and you know, it's a journey. I mean, I look back at some choices I made early on and I'm like, oh, that was a miss, or I didn't know what I didn't know. And then um, I became aware of, oh, wow, we have to make sure that everything we're spotlighting is completely intersectional, that we are showing how when older women are left behind. I mean, female creatives in our industry dramatically under-index for motherhood. If we alone figured out how to let women have children and be in advertising, we would solve the 3% number overnight, I feel. Um, women of color, um, transgender women, all of it. It's all the same issue. It's about unique perspectives. And you can't talk about women and only invite some women to contribute. Because then it's the same problem, but just with the different, same hell, different drapes, you know? Yeah. I think it's really simple but profound. I didn't know what I didn't know. And that's like, true of us all. Yeah. And I feel like the thing about diversity or um, finding your own blind spots is to be able to tolerate the fact that you're going to see things about yourself that you're not proud of. But what I heard this great quote, everyone is guilty and no one is to blame. We're all guilty of having blind spots. We're all guilty of bias. It's part of the way we're wired as humans. But that doesn't mean we're at the mercy of it. We're still powerful enough to say, oh, got it. Let me get curious. Let me ask questions. Let me educate myself. Let me apologize if I've you know, omitted someone or otherwise to create an environment where people didn't feel safe or welcome. That's true. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about the idea of proof of concept, what it looks like at its best? Yeah, so more and more I feel like what 3% has done, and again, this wasn't intentional, but rather than talk about what the future of work should look like or talk about what the mecca of creativity would look like, we just showcase it. Cindy Gallup has a great expression, communication through demonstration. So rather than just say, let me teach you about this, we just put on these amazing events and create this community that is completely diverse. And people that enter that experience, they get that it feels different. They get that they're vibrating differently in that environment and they prefer it. And they're like, holy shit, I want to feel like this every single day. How can I bring whatever this is back to where I work or where I'm a student? Um, so a proof of concept is just saying it can be done. This is how it looks. And enjoy, you know? And I feel like increasingly that's the most, the biggest cultural accelerant available is to just show the world as it should look and let people realize they prefer it. Okay. So as you've been moving down that path with 3%, were there any people that inspired that journey? Um, and what have they done 
that makes them stand out and that journey being sort of becoming more inclusive as a movement. Are there any people that really you look to or that inspired you along the way? I'm very inspired by people still who are figuring out really clever ways to get people to see what they don't see yet. Um, and I wish I had this guy's name, but um, someone recently created an advertising salary spreadsheet um, and let people contribute to it for different jobs and then gave it to Adweek and it became this, this cultural point of like, oh, these are numbers that are real and recent and it caused conversations and discomfort and whoever that individual that ignited that, these are the people that inspire me, people that create these little micro movements that, you know, get change to happen um, more quickly. It's never tidy, it's never a, a program, it's never something that's like funded, it's always someone's, it's always guerrilla, it's always, you know, kind of, what if? Those are the people that inspire me. Yeah, I think that's true. I don't think you can come up with a specific plan that's going to march things through. It really right. does. It emerges organically a lot of the times. Um, I think today there are probably more clients than in the past that expect the idea of proof of concept, like give me an environment that really demonstrates a wor the world in which we live. Um, how do you see the role of clients in making sure that this continues to happen or is accelerated in our industry? Um, is there something that clients could do that could push the industry to be sustainable in this direction? You know, I wrote a piece about this for the Marketing Society a year or two ago that as clients are waking up to the fact that they deserve diversity from their agency depart partners and that they can demand it because they write the check, um, and that they are publicly uh, kind of assessing and auditing their agencies, which is absolutely appropriate. I have yet to see a brand or a client turn the mirror on themselves and say, what am I unwittingly doing that is perpetuating a lack of diversity in my agency partners? And what I mean by that is creating uh, incredibly fast turnarounds and deadlines and very punishing last minute expectations where people find out they have to get on a plane tomorrow, they find out now. And what that does is it creates um, kind of a certainty that a very specific kind of person is gonna work on your account. <laughs> and it's likely not gonna be a really diverse group of people that can um, manage that kind of those expectations. Mm -hmm. um, I also, you know, challenge clients to look at their own code of conduct because in our research, Elephant on Madison Avenue, where we looked at um, sexism in the industry, a large number of the women that reported they'd had um, an experience of sexual uh, misconduct, it was at the hands of a client, not an agency peer. I mean, there was that too, but. I really challenge clients to look at their code of conduct and make sure that their people know that it extends to all of their partners and all of their vendors and every place they're representing themselves. So I feel like clients could actually do a great, you know, could inspire their agency partners by doing the hard work on themselves first before turning the mirror out always at, you know, the agencies. But I also want them to do that. It's a both and. Mm -hmm. So we've talked a little bit about agencies, we've talked about people who've inspired you, uh, we've talked about clients. One thing we haven't talked about, and I think it's really important to talk about, is academia. Um, I, I personally think there need to be some changes, um, but I'm curious what you think would really push this further along, would keep us growing um, and make change more sustainable that we could be doing in the classroom. Yeah. I mean, the thing that, first of all, I love meeting students. I would say that when, at any 3% gathering, when I meet the students that are there, it is the highlight for me. Um, and, and I love asking them what they're, what they're excited about and, and what's, where do they feel stuck. And I have heard from quite a few students that whoever's teaching them is so removed from the realities of working in the industry that they don't actually understand that diversity is highly prized right now. And so I hear things like young women that want to be creative directors being encouraged to go into account management because there's not a lot of opportunity for women in creative leadership. And that makes my blood boil and it's also inaccurate. And so 
I really feel there's a need to educate the educators. So if they've been out of the industry, I would love for them to be part of our community, watch some of our videos, come to our events, and challenge their own thinking about which students they're looking out at every morning are gonna be the ones that are gonna run their own agencies one day. Because I'll bet that it's not what they think.